Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm dropping another Valentine's Day video, guys. We have herb crusted rack of lamb with a teriyaki sauce with creamy, cheesy garlic risotto. You're probably looking at this dish like, oh my God, how in the world did she do that? But it's really not that hard. It looks harder than it looks. So we're just gonna hop out into the video because we do have a lot to cover. So starting off with our rack of lamb, you, I like to cut mine with two bones on each so it can be like a nice thick piece. And you can leave it just like that or you can cut it lollipop style. And if you want to choose to cut it like how I'm cutting it, get your butcher to cut it. And that's what I typically do. But I was in a rush, didn't have time. So I had to pull out my little knife and um, set that I got that I'm going to, of course, leave in the description box below. And I'm just going to shave off all that extra fat that's on the bones so then the bones can can show you can have a lot of bones showing so then it makes for a beautiful picture for presentation time uh, but again you don't have to do this you can just leave it like it is um but I just some of that is mainly like fat in my opinion lamb has a lot of fat that that don't taste good you know how the chicken got fat and you can eat it and it's fine but the lamb fat to me I don't like it so I try to cut as much fat off the lamb chops Oh, off the rack of lamb as possible. And then I just clean my bones, as you can see. And once they look something like that, then you're all good to go. You want to wash your um, rack of lamb. And then you just want to season your rack of lamb. And all I'm using is some salt, some black pepper, and a splash of garlic powder. You want to season this on both sides generously season it too don't don't be afraid to to you know season the rack of lamb season it flip it over season it with the same three seasonings of course you can add more to it but we're making a teriyaki sauce and what you don't want to do is have all these different type of flavors or over season it and you want the teriyaki sauce to kind of shine through the rack of lamb okay it's all about balance because i be seeing sometimes people just seasoning a lot of stuff and people be like oh she she know how to season it be like no nah, it's over season Season. you can over season food sometimes but whatever that's a that's another conversation so now I have my skillet on a high heat and I use about a tablespoon and a half of grapeseed oil and I'm just gonna put about four to five pieces in my skillet you don't want to overcrowd your skillet and um I in total I made nine pieces so the first batch was five pieces in and then the second batch was four pieces in and once it looks something like that you want to flip it over and we're gonna sear all sides so that's the front the back and around the perimeter and you know once it looks like that guys don't be afraid it don't it, you might think it's burnt it's not when it's that brown color that just means the, the rack of lamb just caramelized okay and if you got a caramelized rack of lamb or steak then you got flavor a lot of it so once it starts to look something like this then you can set it to the side um but do not do anything with your skillet once you um finish doing your rack of lamb because we're going to use our skillet later so now moving on to our um herb crust i'm just using some panko bread crumbs i used two cups in total and then i took some rosemary leaves some parsley and some thyme leaves and i put it in my blender and um i put about a tablespoon of each in blended it up and now i'm going to mix it with my panko bread crumbs you can also use fresh bread crumbs if you want to they actually taste better in my opinion um and then i'm going to add in three tablespoons of olive oil and then i'm going to let this mix mixture sit for about 10 minutes you want the bread crumbs to soften especially the panko bread crumbs because you know they're like hard you want them to soften up that's why we put the olive oil in and this is going to help the bread crumbs stick to our rack of land now my footage got messed up a little bit, so it didn't show the next part in its entirety. So you will need some Dijon mustard for this, okay, guys? And you just want to brush the rack of lamb with some Dijon mustard first, only on the part that you're putting your breadcrumbs on. And then just put your breadcrumbs on top of it, and that's it. Set it to the side on a rack, because we're going to finish cooking this in the oven for about 10 minutes. I like my rack of lamb a uh, medium um a temperature but you can do it for however long as you want to i'm gonna leave the what the temperature should be if you like it like medium well or well done and that's it so we're gonna put this in the oven for 10 minutes let it cook and we're good to go so moving on to our teriyaki sauce and that same skillet you you fried your uh, rack of lamb in just drain the excess oil out and then 
toss in about one fourth cup of an onion and I have my stove on a medium heat. And then um, after about two to three minutes, you wanna add in a teaspoon of minced garlic. You can use fresh garlic or you can use the little garlic that come in a jar. I use the garlic that came in a jar. And then um, you want to mix that around for an additional two to three minutes. And um, once you do that, I like to use the Lars teriyaki sauce, guys. Real simple, because all you got to do is just let all those flavors simmer together. And I like to thicken my sauce up with, you know, my favorite slurry, cornstarch and water. I put one tablespoon of cornstarch and about a half a cup of water. Mix it around, and then I just like to pour that mixture in a little bit at a time until it gets to my desired thickness. If you don't, if you like it at its consistency right now, you ain't got to do this step, okay? I just like mine, of course, y'all all know my sauce is to be just a little bit on like the gravy side. So I just add it in to thicken it up, and then you can also add in some additional seasonings. Um, I didn't because the teriyaki sauce is very strong um anyway so you don't it, it don't really call for anything else but you can do whatever you want to um and then once you get it to your desired thickness put it to the side and we're gonna come back and use this later when we do presentation time also if you make it too thick you can also add in some water to thin it out but now moving on to our creamy risotto so i have my um I'm using chicken broth, but you can use vegetable broth if you want to. And I have four and a half cups boiling, okay? You want it to be hot. And then I'm gonna add in three tablespoons of butter and then one fourth cup of an onion. And when it starts to uh, become translucent, I'm gonna add in one tablespoon of minced garlic. You can use fresh garlic if you want to, I didn't. And then once you let that simmer for another two to three minutes, you wanna then add in your, um, your rice. So you wanna add in about a one, one and a half cups of arborio rice, okay? And then you just wanna let that toast for about four to five minutes, okay guys? And I have my stove on a medium heat. Um, and then you just wanna let that toast for about four to five minutes. You wanna hear uh, the rice kinda start to crackle and all that, it's okay. Now once you do that, it's been four to five minutes, you wanna add in your wine. So you wanna add in one cup. I use Pinot Grigio, but you can use Pinot Noir. You can use whatever type of wine you want to. Um, I just like Pinot, Pinot Grigio. Add in one cup, and then when the wine completely reduces, you wanna add in that hot chicken broth. Or if you're using vegetable broth, you add in that um, vegetable broth. Also season your rice. All I'm using is salt, pepper, some um, ground thyme, and then a splash of paprika. I like to season mine all throughout. So I season mine at the beginning, before I put the uh, chicken broth in, and then I season mine and um, halfway through of me putting the chicken broth in, and then at the end. Um, guys, you only wanna add in about a cup at a time of chicken broth in, just a cup at a time. And then once the chicken broth reduces, add in some more chicken broth. And you wanna do that until your chicken broth has completely uh, gone, it's disappeared, your, and then your rice is gonna be pretty much done. We just gotta add in some more butter, and then of course our cheese, because we're making, this is a classic um, cheesy garlic risotto. There are so many different ways you can make risotto. This is, I'm just showing you the classic way, um, but there is so, I mean, it's endless possibilities. Um, but once your chicken broth has, uh, you have put all your chicken broth into your rice, you then, again, just want to add in one tablespoon of butter. Season it again with some thyme, paprika, salt, and pepper. And then add in one cup of Parmesan cheese. And then at that point, you can cut your stove off and then just let the cheese melt and the butter melt and that, and mix it all around. And that's pretty much it, guys. So we have our classic risotto ready. Um, this is actually not my favorite type of risotto. I just wanted to show y'all something classic since I did the rack of lamb in the classic version. I actually like a creamy tomato risotto, guys. That I love tomatoes, so that's like my thing. Um, but this is, no, this right here is good too. I would never steer y'all wrong. Um, but that's pretty much it. Once everything melts, we are ready for presentation time because we all know presentation is key. Okay, so I'm using my circular plates and I'm using my circle um, uh, cookie cutter. And that's just to hold the rice in, okay guys? Because I want, I don't just want to 
plop the rice on my plate. I want it to have some type of shape. So I'm just gonna use my cookie cutter, place the rice all in there, and then lift it up, and then bam, we got a perfect circular rice, um, I don't know, concoction, okay? And it's gonna be look real, real pretty. And then we just wanna take some parsley and put the parsley on top of the rice because we're not gonna be able to reach the rice once we put the rack of lamb around it. And then remember that teriyaki sauce? We're going to place some teriyaki sauce only on, like a, a dab on the plate so that way the rack of lamb, as you can see how beautiful it is, it can sit directly on the teriyaki sauce, guys. We, we take it. We take taking presentation to another level okay and we just want to interlock the bones that's why i shaved all that extra fat off we want to interlock our bones with each other so that they can sit directly up on the rice or whatever and 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 then that what we taking presentation to another level i swear who do i be thinking i am sometimes um but once you do that on both plates you just want to um garnish your plate with some more parsley and you can even serve some more teriyaki sauce on the side and you can add more pieces of rack of lamb to it. I just, I cut mine, remember I have two bones per rack of lamb, or per piece. So I only, that's six pieces all together, so that's that's it. I ain't wanna overcrowd my plate. And sometimes less is better. Uh, but that's pretty much it, guys. You got your five-star dish at your five-star restaurant in your house on Valentine's Day. I can't wait to see y'all pictures because I know y'all gonna recreate this dish and do me proud. But but that's it, guys. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you guys are washing your hands and I will see you guys at my next video.